Depositional landforms are landforms that have been put down uh, because they are low energy environments. This is the first depositional landform and this is a spit. Uh, we can say it starts off here with the direction of the prevailing wind. In the case of the UK, this is coming from the southwest. And this then transfers energy. And this energy creates waves. Uh, and the waves then move up the beach. This is called the swash and back down the beach, which is called a backwash. And this then moves sediment along the coastline. Where the coastline changes direction, this is a key feature, where the coastline changes direction, the sediment continues to grow outwards uh, from the land, and this is what makes our spit, so where it grows across a river. The current of the river stops the sand from reaching the other side, and this is what's called a spit. Occasionally, the wind will change direction, and it will push parts of the spit backwards as it grows, and these are called recurves. Behind the spit, there is a salt marsh found in an area of low energy. So this area here, not much energy going on, no wave energy, no... So here is your example of a spit. This is Dawlish Warren. Uh, here it is in the picture, uh, growing out from the coast. It goes across the river X, across the X estuary. And it's in the county of Dorset, uh, on the south coast of England, close to the town of Torquay. We can see a variety of the features we've seen before. So here we have the recurves. This is where that prevailing wind has uh, changed direction. You can see it's grown out. Here's the change in direction. There's the angle where the coastline changes direction, and the spit grows out from there. And we can see the salt marsh behind it as well. This is exposed now at low tide, but it's low energy. There's not much going on there at the moment. This is what a spit could develop into. Uh, if it's not coming across the mouth of a river, then it will become a bar. So here we have a lagoon. It's not a river, so there's no current moving outwards to sea. So the beach is able to just grow straight across and join up, so we have a bar. And in this one, the, spit, the coastline has changed direction. So we've had a spit originally, but it's continued growing on, joined up to an island, and that's called a tombolo. And important of all of these depositional features is what's called a constructive wave. And these constructive waves have a long wavelength, uh, but it's the swash that's most strong in them. They add sand to the beach, they build it up, they deposit sand, hence depositional landforms. Here's Dawlish War on the spit again. Uh, this time we're going to focus on the development of sand dunes. So if we add a letter A to B, this is our transect across the sand dunes. Close to A, so in this area here, we can see that there is sand. It is the beach. In this area, further away from the beach, we now start to have some trees. This is called a climax community. The vegetation changes. At the front, we have little tiny sand dunes called embryo sand dunes. And as we go over the top, we come into little bits of dip in the sand dunes, and then the sand dunes will grow some more. At the back, there are fixed sand dunes. This diagram shows it nicely. So you can see we have the sea at the front here. These are the little embryo dunes. Some of the problems here is that large destructive waves will destroy those sand dunes so they can be destroyed. Um, and the marram grass then finds it very difficult to grow. Marram grass is a pioneer, a colonizer at the front of these dunes here because it has waxy skin that stops transpiration. As we move further away from the sea, we get to the mobile dunes and the four dunes, and we can start to see a little bit more vegetation now. Uh, the roots start to bind the sand together. That's what the roots do. They hold the sand in place. And as we move closer towards the back, we can see we have what's called a climax community. This is the woodland in the case of Dawlish Warren. One other feature with sand dunes is a dune slack. This is just where the dunes dip uh, low. And you have very wet, boggy conditions there. So you have plants like sedges that like live in there, as well as mosses. Here's some images of sand dunes. So this is the front, this is the beach. And these little obstacles, these bits of driftwood or seaweed, will stop the sand bouncing along the coast in a process called saltation. And they will start to build up these little embryo dunes. That's how they start. Then here are your marram grass. This starts to pioneer and colonise these embryo dunes because its roots start fixing the sand together. 
and it has this waxy coating which stops it losing water in an area of high salinity. And then as we move away from the front, so we become further inland, so we're now in this top right picture here, we can see there is much more vegetation, more cover, and more variety. There are different types of plants. We have things such as woody nightshade, and eventually getting towards the woodland.